Okay, good morning and welcome to my first ever Camtasia studio recording. Just did a couple of quick uh, test records and uh, it seemed good. So I'm going to do a quick uh, overview of turnover. Um, I was asked to give some instructions to someone about how turnover works. So I'm going to do this very quickly and do it into a little series of blogs for the website so that everyone can benefit if it helps somebody. In this example, um, I'm on a customer system um, that's running IBM I operating system. Um, previous generations of this machine have been called the AS400, the I series, the system I, I5 OS. Um, people still call this box the AS400 incorrectly as that machine was discontinued in the 90s, <laughs> approaching 20 years ago. Um, uh, anyway, so I'm going to sign on here using IBM My operating system. I'm going to do everything through the green screen and uh, I'm not going to tell you why. I'm, I just am going to do it all for the green screen. So I'm going to sign in. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the turnover change management tool. I'm expecting my wife and kids to walk in through any second, which means I'm going to have to stop this recording. This is Daisy Bell. She's my little girl. And a constant interruption. One of the benefits of working from home is you get your little girls to come running in to interrupt you recording things. Um, Yes. Right, Stinker. You've got to go off and play. And then I can get back to turnover change management. Pause. <laughs> okay, so ignoring all the sounds around me, uh, outside the Lytton home office, there's people cutting grass, there's trucks driving around, the missus has just got home from the gym, the kids are running wild, and uh, the dog wants me to take him walkies. So I'm gonna make this as quick as I can. I'm on one minute and 54 seconds and I haven't even started yet. So what I'm gonna cover right now is uh, a quick overview of projects and tasks. So from this turnover main menu, option nine, takes me into projects and tasks. I'm gonna go to my projects. Mine are called NL01. Um, obviously your mileage may vary. You'll have a project created for yourself. If there isn't one, create it. You can call it whatever you like. Um, I called it NL01, Nick Litton 01, and I'll create others for me as well. The important thing to remember is that within a project you have a series of tasks. Again, this is, you can organize this in any way you like. I like to organize tasks as little units of work containing bunches of programs. You can see I've got three main tasks, web services for the Infor Access interface. This was a whole bunch of code development. I've then got a separate task for one particular one. Um, this was a bunch of modules and it was giving me a load of grief so I created a separate task for it so I could track that more. Um, and I'm now onto the stage where we're just about to enter UAT, user acceptance testing, for this project. So I've created a separate task, but specifically for pre-UAT stuff. So these are the stuff that's been code tested, um, but we're making little tweaks just before we go into UAT. In this one example, the reason that I'm recording this uh, instruction video uh, one of my colleagues, John, asked me for some instructions on how to use turnover change management, so I thought I'd record it. So in this case, I'm going to create a task just for you, John, um, covering the one program that we're talking about, about web post put. In this case, he's done his work outside of turnover, so we've got the turnover code, which is controlled in the UAT library, um, and we have some code in his library, which he's done separately. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that code import it into turnover, promote it through turnover, so we're using the change management rules. And hopefully um, you can watch the video and understand how I did it and use the same uh, techniques going forward. I got so excited then, I spat on my keyboard. Right, I'm gonna create a new task. I'm gonna create task four, why not? So from this work with tasks menu, I'm going to press F6 to add a task. So this is down here on the bottom, F6, add task. And it says, right, what are you going to do? I'm going to call this task web post put. That's my program name. And this is the uh, post put away um, uh, add to change management. Why not? The resource is me, status. There's loads of statuses. I'm going to leave it as ongoing. Um, the requester, hey, for my site that I'm working on, I'm going to use my turnover admin name. Um, obviously, if you're out there in internet land watching this video, you could use any requester you like. This is the important bit, the application release and version. The application that we're using on is what dictates where we're going to promote to, what the destination library is. Um, the project that I'm working on here is called AHP2 Release 2. That tells me that when I check things to UAT, it goes to a specific library, in this case called AHP Mods. 
Um, you can fill all of these other parameters out with start dates, end dates, and all that stuff to help your um, help desk track things. In this case, I'm not going to because that's too it's outside of what I'm trying to do. So I'm just going to press enter, and this will hopefully add me a new task. It gives me a free format text entry where I can add some notes. I'm not going to. There we are. Task 4 added to project NL01. So let's press F12 and go back. Here we have a new task created for me. It's ongoing. It's ready for me to work in it. So if I want to work in this task, I've just got to go back to the main menu. Here I am back at the main turnover menu, the one that I got to from entering the turnover command from the command line. And I'm now going to work with the programmer work list manager. So I've created my task. I'm ready to do some work. I'm ready to put some programs onto that task list and work with it. Um, turnover has this concept called a work list manager. So if I do 12 to go into the work list manager, it shows me all of my projects and tasks. Aha, you say, NL01004 is not displayed. That's right, because even though the project and task is there, I haven't yet created a work list attached to that task. So I'm just going to press F6 to add one. Once I've created it, it will be there until I delete it. So I'm going to create it. Um, it comes up and says, right, what do you want to do? Do you want to select uh, a work list? And I say, yes. I don't want to type it in directly. I could type in NL010004. Um, in fact, I will. No, I won't. I'm going to press Enter. And because I didn't enter anything, it shows me all of the tasks that are out there on the system. So uh, oh, there's my NL001. There's my number four that I just created. I'm just going to select it and press Enter. Hey, it's now created me a work list. So there's my work list ready for me to do some work in it. Um, if I go into it, I'm going to select that work list and press enter. Here we are in the programmer work list. A programmer work list is kind of like PDM. If you're familiar with uh, the program development manager, is that what it's called? Programming development manager? Uh, using IBM I, you'll be very familiar with the programmer work list and, it work, and how it works. There's a few little differences, um, which are actually pretty neat within uh, the turnover uh, development environment. Um, and I'm going to go through those now. But for right now, as I've just reached uh, seven and a half minutes, I'm going to stop this video and make sure it's recording okay. And then I'll record step two, which is using a programmer work list. Right, that's it, I think.